Hi, I'm Pastor Martin, and once again, I want to welcome you to another perspective. I've discovered something quite interesting that I want to share with you today. You know, in our, in our current political environment, you know, with, with all the stuff going on and all those vying to be president of the United States, there's been a lot of talk about hope and change. I think all of them are embracing um, all of the candidates, whatever, uh, candidates, whatever side of the aisle they're on, Republican or Democrat or whatever, they're, they're embracing the idea of change, okay, and, and hope and all this stuff. One of them, I think, is embracing more hope than the rest, but they're all pretty much um, have determined, or at least um, presenting an image that they desire change too, okay? Recognizing this is what the American people desire is change. But, you know, watching, you know, all the, the news broadcasts and the interviews and the opinions and the polls and the, and the races and the fervor, I began to recognize a couple of things biblically that I want to share with you today. Something that just jumped right out at me. And so we're talking about hope. As so we find hope, you know, reflected in, the, in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 13th verse. Let me read it to you right now. And it's the Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abide faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, which is love. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. Love. This is a very familiar verse to any of us who have been in this thing for a while, or even not a while at all. This is a very familiar verse. Faith, hope, and charity. Love. And, and this is what's ministered. I've ministered it too many times myself. But we focus on the love, the charity, because it says out of these three, faith, hope, and charity, the greatest is love, charity. And so this is what we preach. But, but to me, what struck me today as I was considering hope is that these three are important. It's just telling us that the greatest is charity, love, but there is a tremendous importance on faith and hope. But we miss that because we go right to the greatest, which is charity, which is love. And so I was looking at this verse and I was seeing like stair steps. Stair steps to love are faith and hope. And you say, oh, come on, you know, how, how do you get that, you know? Well, just hold your finger right there for a moment at the first Corinthians 13 and 13 and turn with me to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 34th through the 39th verse. Matthew 22, starting in verse 34. Jesus, it says, But when the Pharisees heard that he, Jesus, had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, Jesus said. The first greatest commandment is to love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. And the second greatest commandment, which is just like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. So, so we're talking about love just for this moment. We're still, we're still staying focused on hope, but I want to show you a particular principle, okay? That, that when Jesus is talking to these guys about the greatest commandment, he said the greatest is that you love God. But the second, right next to the greatest, is loving your neighbor, loving each other. What I want to share with you here is what Jesus is giving us. He's, I don't want to say he's giving us a formula, but he's giving us sort of a pattern. That, that when he's speaking on a particular topic and he said, this is the greatest, but this is the second greatest, what you're seeing is sort of a stair step to the greatest. And in order to get to the greatest, you have to get past that first step. There are steps to attaining the greatest. And, and so we're talking right here in this area of love, 
about loving God with all of your heart is the greatest. But right next to it, and what I want to say a step down or a step away from the greatest, is loving each other, loving your fellow man, loving those that God created, your brothers and your sisters in creation. And so what I'm suggesting to you today is in order to attain the greatest, to love God, you have to first love your fellow human being, those that God created. You know, I speak to a guy on the internet just recently, just yesterday as a matter of fact, and he was asking me about my beliefs, and he was kind of concerned, you know, some of the statements that I've made, and, 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 and he said, how can I call myself a Christian, you know, with some of the things that I've sort of begun to lean toward, began to embrace. And what I shared with him simply was that being a Christian, a Christian, a Christian, to me that's one who has embraced the teachings of Jesus, who, who's, who's determined to become a disciple of Jesus, which, which I consider myself. And so there's a whole lot, there's a lot of other things in this book, in the Bible, a lot of things that are written, but but I'm convinced that if, if, we, if we could just somehow find our way to simply embrace and immerse ourselves simply in the words that are written in red, we'd probably be a lot better off than we are now trying to understand, trying to ingest this whole thing. Just be a disciple of Jesus. It's a whole lot less confusing. But Jesus, to me, is giving us a great principle here, a, a pretty great pattern to, to sort of understand and embrace. That when he gives us something to be the greatest, and gives us as well that thing that is right next to the greatest, that thing that is right next to the greatest is a stair step. We understand in this area of love, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, the his creation, us. That he, that he sacrificed his one and only son. We know the verse. God's agenda, God's purpose, God's heart, his desire. All, all that God does, as far as we understand, especially with the life and teachings of Jesus, has to do with us. God's love for mankind. You know, God, what Jesus is simply sharing with us here with these two great commandments, the first, to love God with all of our heart, and the second, to love each other, is that we can't love God unless we love each other. He's given us stair steps here. Understand that. Embrace that. There's a reality in that. We, we, we spend our times, even as the church, you know, desiring it, and, and even making up songs. Oh, how I love Jesus, and, and I love God, and blah, 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 yet. We hate Muslims. We, we validate the taking of life if, if they're not like us. And so we need to recognize the love of God is for all of his creation, all of mankind. And we can't love God unless we love mankind, his creation. I was, remember uh, about a year or so ago, I was speaking to a young girl that was incarcerated and, and she had a little baby girl. And I asked her, I said, you know, one day when you grow up and you get older and you begin making, you know, right choices and everything, and, and you finally meet somebody, you know, the right guy, not some knucklehead. And he loves you and he wants to marry you and you love him. Is it okay if he doesn't love your little girl as long as he loves you? And she said, no. And so I said, why? Why? She, she said, because my, my daughter is, is a piece of me. I love my daughter. If he loves me, he'll love my daughter. And I said, you're exactly right. And it's the same with God. If, if we don't love the love of God, which is his creation, our fellow brothers and sisters on this planet, we don't love God. And, and so the stair steps to loving God is loving people. Jesus laid down his life for mankind. He didn't lay down his life for Christians. He didn't lay down his life for Jews or Muslims or anybody. He laid down his life for everyone, mankind, the world. For God so loved the world. No greater love. <laughs> and so if we don't love what God loves, we can't love God. And that's simply what Jesus is telling us here in the book of Matthew, that the greatest is commandment is to love God with all of your heart. But the second the stair step to loving God 
It's loving your neighbor, loving each other and the people that he was speaking to especially and us.